marks the first day of school for thousands of students in the area. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Makia Turner. And I'm Patricia Valone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, summer is officially over for the 124,000 students in Prince George's County. Maryland's second largest school district has many changes coming in the new academic year. As parents and kids at Bladensburg Elementary return to school for the first day of classes, they were greeted by some official faces, both old and new. Rochelle Metzger has the story. After months of sleeping in, you might expect a lot of groggy faces, but students and parents arriving here at Bladensburg Elementary School this morning are wide awake, excited, and ready to return to class. I like the first day of school. An enthusiastic Jordan Mitchell admits he was not so happy when his alarm went off this morning. I was trying to go to sleep. You wanted to sleep? Well, my mom told me to get out of bed. Lois Blue escorted her grandchildren. She says this year she hopes to see smaller class sizes and more individual attention. More aids in the class to help the teachers, because teachers can't do it all alone. Dr. Segun Eubanks chairs the newly expanded Board of Education. He says increasing parent and community engagement is a top priority and will help fill some of those gaps. We have a tremendously talented population with all kinds of skills and knowledge and abilities. If we can harness some of that energy and align some of the resources that we have in our various county agencies and bring some of those resources to the schools, we think that can certainly make up for at least some of our financial challenges. The new academic year brings many changes to Maryland's second largest school district, 650 new teachers, a dozen new principals, and a retooled governance structure that begins at the top with new school's chief, Dr. Kevin Maxwell. We have eight schools that are offering all-day pre-kindergarten, and so parents will, will see a, a longer day for the youngest uh, children that we serve. Uh, there's some additional technology, there's some new uh, security across our system. We spent over seven million dollars in school security upgrades. This is a holistic approach, so the entire government is responsible for bringing confidence into our school system and bringing confidence into these neighborhoods. Now that classes have resumed, you can expect to see more buses and cars on local roads. So watch your speed, look out for pedestrian traffic, and leave yourself some extra time in the morning for your commute. In Bladensburg, I'm Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. Frederick County Schools also started today. Calvert, Cecil, St. Mary's, and Washington Counties begin classes later this week. The rest of Maryland school districts, including Montgomery, Anne Arundel, and Baltimore Counties, kick off next Monday. Ashley Exum says she was so excited that she woke up about 4.30 this morning. Exum, a graduate of Largo High School and Bowie State University, is starting her career today as a first grade teacher in Bowie. CTV Sonia Srivastava has more. One year old Ashley Exum has been waiting all summer for this. Her very own classroom, her very own students. I was very excited. I woke up at 4 30 this morning. I could barely sleep last night. I was very happy to come to school this morning. You know, I was finally waiting to match names with faces. I've been seeing their names all last week and now I get to see who they actually are and I can't wait to work with them this school year. Exum says she realized she wanted to be a teacher while attending Largo High School. This past May, she graduated from Bowie State University with a degree in elementary education. She is among the 700 new teachers this year in Prince George's schools. You can't honestly do anything without being without a teacher. Everything starts with the education and everything starts here in elementary school. It's a great and firm foundation. We're so, super excited and we were even more excited because she did her internship here last year. So she already knows the kids. So she already has a built-in rapport where a lot of kids already know her. So it just was a perfect fit for her to be able to come to Northview. Appreciate it, Marcellus. You're our line leader. Everyone say yay! Yay! There is no doubt being a first grade teacher takes patience and comes with a lot of responsibility. But for Exum, this job is about giving back to a community that made her who she is today. I love Prince George's County now. I went here for school and now I get to teach here so I can just get to give back to my community that gave so much to me. Now, there are almost 25 kids in Ms. Exum's first grade class, and they're all wearing these name tags for about a week so that Ms. Exum can get to know them and they can get to know her. Keep your hands up so I know if you need scissors. Does anyone have lunch money in their backpack? Raise your hand if you have lunch money in your pocket. Oh, did you raise your hand? Everyone 
Raise your hand if you want to say something. There will be a lot of milestones this year for these youngsters. After all, they will always remember their first grade teacher. So as they continue to grow and learn, it's safe to say this young teacher will also become a student in her own classroom. In Bowie, Sonia Shivasva for CTV News. Exxon did her internship at Northview Elementary School, so she felt right at home. We wish her well. Several last-minute text messages and phone calls may have saved a Morningside ambulance. Fire Chief Mark Bashore says he plans to meet with Volunteer Chief Michael White as long as the ambulance continues to provide services to residents in the area. At issue is a new collective bargaining agreement between the county and the Firefighters and Paramedics Union. Morningside has said that to comply with newly imposed staffing restrictions, it wants the ambulance converted to an all-response medic unit. White had threatened to put the emergency vehicle out of commission to avoid the mandatory staffing requirements. County officials say that's unacceptable. The two defendants charged in connection with the death of a Prince George's County Police officer were in court today. The attorney for Kenneth Mitchell sought to have the case against his client dropped, while Kevon Neal's lawyer wanted the judge to rule some of the statements inadmissible in court. Denise Douglas explains. Both Officer Adrian Morris's mother and fiance were in court today as attorneys for both defendants, argued various motions. At times, you can see them shaking their heads, agreeing and disagreeing with the issues. You'll remember that Morris died when he crashed his police cruiser on I-95. He and his partner were chasing Kavan Neal and Kenneth Mitchell for a theft at a gas station in 2012. Neal is charged with vehicular manslaughter. His lawyer argued that some statements he made while in custody should be inadmissible during the trial. Neal told a detective who was taking him to the restroom that he was not his fault that the officer died and that the officer should have been wearing a seatbelt. The judge agreed, though, to let that in, but says some of the other statements would not be allowed. Also, Neal's attorney wants to bring into evidence police policy on chases during the trial, which goes to the heart of whether Morris should have been chasing the defendants. The judge will make a decision on that motion later this month. As far as the other defendant, Kenneth Mitchell, his attorney wanted the case against him dismissed. The judge ruled against that, but he did grant the motion for bond and set it at $50,000. Mitchell is charged with theft and unauthorized use of a vehicle, and he's facing 15 years in prison on the vehicular manslaughter charge. Neal is facing 35 years if he is convicted. I'm Denise Douglas in Upper Marlboro, CTV News. The other officer involved in the crash, Michael Reicher, survived. Uh, Mitchell's trial is slated for late October, and Neil will go on trial early next year. An infant remains in critical condition tonight after an overnight crash on the Beltway. The incident happened about 10 p.m. on the inner loop near exit 13 by Ritchie Marlboro Road. State police say a preliminary investigation reveals that 21-year-old Devon, uh, Devontae Moon was driving southbound when he lost control and struck the center of a median guardrail. Moon's Nissan bounced off the rail and into oncoming traffic. The car was then struck by a tractor trailer. The child was rushed to, the ch uh, to Children's Hospital, while Moon and an adult passenger were being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The truck driver is unharmed. Now, press reports say alcohol and aggressive driving on Moon's part is to blame. 